You know, everybody knows that modern tech is a big deal in our lives and have our cities changed or how likely is it that our cities will change um, in, in response to new technologies that we casually use all day every day. Uh, what do modern modes of communication mean for interacting and therefore for cities? The death of distance, the end of cities, well, that runs up against a very big deal in cities, which is agglomeration economies and the power of agglomeration. So here we are again with these cent centripetal and centrifugal forces working against each other, and that's, that's the story of cities anyway. When co-location is infeasible, networks may substitute for agglomeration. This possibility of substitution means that small regions may survive and prosper. I like this because it expands the conventional definition of agglomeration to include networking. And networking can be either, here we go, face to face or not. And I used to tell my students, you know, why are we all here? Why are we all in the same room? Right? Why can't we be doing, have the same conversation not in the same room? Yet, of course, I think we all kind of know the answer because we're all making sacrifices and bearing the cost of getting together into the same room because we think that is, um, that's a better way. So it's not just old-fashioned um, uh, physical access density, but it's the density of networking opportunities that matters, which may be face-to-face -face or may not. A central paradox of our times that in cities industrial agglomerations remain remarkably vital despite the easier, ever easier movement of goods and knowledge over space. So it's a paradox. What kind of information do we accept? Um, do we accept impersonally over a medium? And what kind of information do we, um, do we desire to have? Do we best digest? if it's provided to us um, in the form of a conversation where we make eye contact and all those other things that people do when they are in the same room. There are many kinds of knowledge and we're going to say there is codified knowledge and there is tacit knowledge. The codified knowledge, that's a, that's a, that's a spreadsheet that I can email to you. I know how to ride a bicycle, but I can't write it down. So there are many things that I cannot really write down in a way that is adequate for transmitting it to you and others. So in this research, we're looking at variations in the choice, in the reported choice to work at home, and we're asking does occupation explain more than, now the runners up are city type, which we think we understand a little bit, and local area planning regime. Uh, which are other city descriptors that we have some data on. Some occupations are most important. There are some recent years next in importance in the expected sequence, and city type planning regime are the least influential. That's, that's the empirical finding.